Or fellow Kenyans, the significant increase in arbitrary arrests, enforced dis disappearances, torture, and extrajudicial killings should be deeply of concern not only to law abiding Kenyans but also the international community and our development partners. If it was not clear before, the release of the investigative report, the lifting of the fog, or let us say lifting the veil, reveals the Kenya Police Service motto of the Tunishi Kowate, quote unquote, or service to all, quote, to quote unquote, has been substituted by Utumishi kwa Kenya Kwanza. Kenya Kwanza. Quote unquote. Since June, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights and the Police Reforms Working Group have reported 23 murders, 34 forcibly vanished individuals, and 164 arrests, including also Bob Jaggi, Aslam Longton and Jamil Longton, who were kidnapped in Kitengela and released after one month. Denzel Omondi, a JKU art student, was among the demonstrators who stormed the parliament on June 25th, was abducted two days later. Nine days later, his tortured body was discovered of floating, floating in a Georgia quarry. John Juguna Kuria, a civic educationist based in West Poco, was reported missing for 12 days before his mangled body was, discov was, was discovered, discarded. Over the past three days, Maverick Aoko and Boniface Mwangi have been kidnapped from their outhouses. After being freed, Mwangi was accused of inciting others. It's still not clear where Ms. Aoko is. The most alarming is that public mortuaries in Thika and Nairobi are requesting court orders to dispose 201 unclaimed dead bodies that the police have dropped off in the past year. Joining the growing international condemnation, the Independent Medical Legal Unit, IMLU, and the World Organization Against Torture, OMCT, have denounced this regime for gross human rights violations that amount to apparent breaches of international humanitarian treaties that Kenya has ratified, especially the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Conventions Against Torture and Enforced Disappearances. As the opposition, we demand that the security services from the National Intelligence Service, NIS, under the leadership of Mordin, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations, and the DCI, led by Mohammed Amin, the Anti-Terrorism Police Unit, ATPU, under the leadership of Sid Kiprotich, the Serious Crimes Unit, led by Michael Sun, Joseph Boynet, the Deputy National Security Advisor, State House, and the Crime Research Intelligence, Intelligence Unit, CRIB, led by John Anango, ought to be held accountable for their violations of Kenyan's rights and made criminally responsible. Because at the end of the day, all public officers holding the positions I mentioned are not above the Constitution. Furthermore, their immediate superiors, the Inspector General of the Kenya Police and the Minister for Interior and National Administration, should be held accountable for overseeing a service that has gone rogue 
with a focus on serving the interests of a few political elite at the expense of Kenyan security. However, it is our contention that the President of the Republic of Kenya carries the biggest responsibility for police, foreign spying, state-sponsored abductions, hijackings, and extrajudicial killings. Despite overwhelming evidence, including that of the Deputy President, Mr. Rigadi Gachagua, during the impeachment trial, Mr. Ruto continues to claim that he is not aware of any such incidents. Ruto further says that these abductions, except judicial killings, are <laughs> fake news and propaganda that is hurting our nation. We want to make it clear to Mr. Ruto that it, it, is, it is actually his huge total efforts to revert Kenya to a police state that are hurting our nation and our nation's image, locally and abroad. The buck stops with him. Mr. Ruto should resign with immediate effect for violating his oath of office to be faithful and bear true allegiance to the public, to the Republic of Kenya, and that he would obey, preserve, and protect this constitution of Kenya. That was the oath of office. Lastly, we take this moment to pay tribute to the brave nation media group of journal group journalists for releasing the investigations in a time of such great danger for practitioners. Regardless of media outlet, you have been brutally attacked by security agents. We understand the equipment have been illegally confiscated. We know that a fair number of you have been taken to court and gang orders issued stopping you from publishing on certain topics, organizations or personalities. Nonetheless, you steadfastly adhere to the Kenyan Code of Conduct for the practice of journalism. By doing so, you have demonstrated that the fundamental yearning for democratic liberties, including access to honest and faxed First, fact-based news will never be destroyed, even by the most brutal dictatorship. Thank you very much, and may God bless our country, Kenya. I just need to probably highlight here, this is a, what is happening in the country with, with a living example. God to disenfranchising Kenyans, the people of Banisa in the northeast and the people of Magarini, for example, have been waiting. I think it's going to the second year, probably over three years. I have here, for example, Mr. Samuel Kombenzai. Uh, why don't you stand here? Mr. Mr. Samuel Kombenzai has been waiting to run for the by election in uh, Magarini on a wiper ticket which is an Azimur ticket. Uh, but there's nothing happening. What instead we are witnessing is procrastination, attempts to say, because the most illogical thing I've heard in the last 24 hours is a statement by my friend Weta <laughs> saying that they want first of all to dispense with the Gachagua hearings before he can forward the names of the nine nominees to present the letter to Gazette. Because he said, if we send out as we acted the, you know, expeditiously, as my colleague has mentioned, then he said, time would have started running. It is obvious, they want to prolong this whole thing about establishing a new IABC. We say it plainly so that even our diplomatic colleagues, heads of missions accredited to Kenya, please take note. I had the American ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman, express concern. In fact, I think she even visited the IABC. It 
is clear Mr. Ruto does not own an IABC. I think you should tell us why he doesn't want a new IABC. Nakushukuru kwa swali lako kwa jumla tumekusanya tumekusanyika hapa leo ili tupe taarifa ambayo tumesoma kwa lugha ya Kiingereza kwamba wa Kenya awaridiki kamwe kwa sababu ya mambo haya matatu jambo la kwanza ni kwamba sasa ya yapata mwaka wa Eh, tuendelea sasa mwaka wa tatu hivi bila kuwa na tume ya uchaguzi na tumeweka wazi kwamba bwana Ruto rais wa jamhuri kwa wakati huu ni kama hana nia kabisa la kuhakikisha kwamba Kenya inapata inapata tume mpya yaliyofanyika ni mayo yote tuelewa lakini sasa kuna umuhimu mkubwa sana jina la koki mwili limepelekwa mbele kwa sababu jambo hili lilikuwa limepelekwa kwa mahakama wengine walikuwa wakitaka kulaumu wanaazimio na wapo wakati ule lakini wiki moja iliyopita uamuzi umetolewa na mahakama kwamba yule ambaye alikuwa anasongeshwa mbele atoki kwa chama ambacho kimewakilisha bungeni kwa hivyo 